Alright, Arataki Ito is finally out, and let's talk about everything to do with his kit, going from his abilities to best in slot weapon, also taking a look at his best in slot artifacts, and also go on a bit of a gameplay loop and what you'll be expecting to do with his rotation. So let's just jump into it. Arataki's elemental skill is Akashi Burst here. He will throw out his bull, uh, which does a massive hit of geo damage upon first hit, and will and also, we'll give, also him give him a stack him of a superlative super strength, as you can see here. The bull will also taunt enemies around it, and its HP is based on Arataki's HP. And and whenever Ushi and takes damage, he will gain a stack of a uh, superlative strength for Ito, and you can only gain one stack this way per two seconds. And we'll talk about superlative strength in just a moment here. As well, when Ushi well flees with, uh, or reaches zero HP or duration ends, Arataki will also gain a stack of superlative strength that way. His duration is only six seconds, so it's not that phenomenal, and his cooldown is 10 seconds, so there's a four second downtime. And his inherited HP at level eight is 100%, so we'll have a pretty hefty amount of HP in my honest opinion. So you can use this as a, a tanking kind of mechanism because you will have pretty much a second character on the field. His elemental burst though is pretty much like Hu Tao's elemental skill. He converts his damage type into Geo and that's for all his normal charge and plunging attacks. He gets a, he gets a normal attack normal speed increase as well as an increase uh, on his attack based on his defense. So he just is a defense scaling character. As well an extra, well, an extra on his first and third strikes of his attack combo. He will grant Arataki Ito one stack of superlative strength so pretty frequently. And on top of that he also gains elemental and physical res uh, in, uh, decrease by 20%. Now how does this all tie into everything and his playstyle and what he is? Well that is you have to read his normal attack. This is not something you have to do for most characters but for Arataki you have to read his normal attack and this one says perform up to four consecutive strikes when the second and fourth strike hit opponents uh, either will gain one or two stacks of superlative strength respectively. A max of five stacks can be achieved and triggering this effect will refresh the duration uh, or the current duration of an existing stack. You uh, then look at his charge attack. When holding to perform a charge attack, Ito unleashes a series of Arataki Kasagiri slashes without consuming stamina. Instead, each uh, Arataki Kasagiri slash consumes one stack of superlative strength. And that and is that the is gameplay the loop right there. Just as a quick note as to why the abilities don't sound phenomenal is that his normal attack is kind of like a build up, especially if you have his burst up, the normal attacks, every hit is giving you an, uh, a stack of uh, superlative strength. And then his charge attack unleashes all these superlative strength stacks uh, into doing massive damage. We'll definitely touch more on his actual gameplay loop in the gameplay loop section, but for now, just keep that in mind that his normal attack has a bit of a text where you build superlative strength stacks and it all kind of synergizes well into working as a whole character, but more on that a bit later. Now going on to his passive talents, his first one, when he consumes pretty much a stack of superlative strength, he will gain an attack speed increase of up to 10% uh, to a maximum stack of 30%, and as well, he will increase his resistance to interruption. Pretty good passive talent, uh, positives all around. Second passive talent, Ar Ar Arataki Kasagiri damage is increased by 35% of Arataki Ido's defense. Uh, Arataki Kasagiri is again his superlative strength stack uh, usage, so his uh, charge attacks uh, once you have the stacks up. So pretty good overall damage increase. And his third passive is he gains wood when you hit it, hit wood. When you when you want to harvest wood from trees, he gains more wood. So if you have him, he's a lumberjack. It's pretty cool. Now, out of his abilities, which talent priority should you level up first and foremost? Well, it's literally a competition between his normal attack and his elemental burst. You don't really want to do his elemental skill first. It's not really the best thing about him. So I'd recommend his elemental burst because it's just going to be of a lot more value because it is a raw damage boost by an attack percent. Uh, but again, normal attack as well is just as equally good, so I recommend getting that one as well. Alright, so let's talk constellations. First constellation, after using his elemental burst, Arataki Ito gains two stacks of superlative strength immediately, and after one second, uh, Ito will gain one stack of superlative strength every 0.5 seconds for 1.5 seconds. Pretty good. This is essentially kind of like Euler's C6, but also in, in a C1, but also a lot weaker. But yes, uh, Ito will just have kind of like a constant gain of superlative strength as you play him uh, uh, other than when you are doing your normal attacks. Pretty good constellation if you do accidentally get it. C2 on the other hand is not that amazing after you use his elemental burst. Each party member who is the element of Geo will decrease that skill uh, CD by 1.5 seconds and restore 6 energy to our attack Ito. Uh, the CD can be reduced uh, by a total of 4.5 seconds and a max of 18 energy can be restored in this manner. Now the reason this is actually not that great is because having a full party of Geo characters is more of a meme than anything else you don't really want to do that there's no practical reason to have all geo characters you know the, the most you'd ever have is two that's just goro really i'd say um so not a practical one but if you're if you want to just meme around with um a c2 arataki ida with four geo characters by all means that's pretty cool in my opinion 
C4 is a bit of a weird one in my opinion, doesn't, I don't really get it. I, I get it, but yeah, when the Raging Oni King state uh, caused by his burst ends, all nearby party members gain 20% defense and 20% attack for 10 seconds. I get the coolness of it, of the 20% attack boost, but why is it the 20% defense boost when he's just, um, Arataki has now exited his damage phase? Kind of doesn't make sense, but I guess if you're like going for like, let's say an Arataki Noel combo, then you might get a bit of value there by just jumping in and out of both Geo characters doing massive damage through that. But overall, bit of a weird one in my opinion. You don't really get much value out of the 20% defense. Now onto his C6. This is probably on par with Euler's C6 as well in terms of just usefulness overall. But Arataki Ito's charge attacks deal 70% increased crit damage only when he's uh, charge attacking. So keep that in mind, charge attack specifically. Additionally, when he uses his Arataki Kasagiri, which is using a superlative strength stack, he has a 50% chance not to consume a superlative strength stack, which is crazy. Um, this right here, if you do get this, you're going to have an absolutely phenomenal character because your Arataki's charge attacks will be able to have 300% crit damage, essentially, which is a very rare number for a character to achieve. Only Hu Tiao is being able to achieve it that well. Overall, if you get him to C6, you're going to enjoy him. But honestly, in my overall opinion, stopping at C1 is a good place to stop. Stopping at C5 is a good place to stop, and then also C6. Stopping anywhere in between these ones, so at C2, 3, or 4, you're not really going to get a lot of value. You're going to enjoy the character, but C3 is definitely not a stopping point because it's only your elemental skill. Um, and then the other ones aren't that fun phenomenal to really stop at. So I'd really recommend just stopping at C1. It's going to be enough value for you. But if you want to go the whole mile, C6 is the answer in my opinion. Now in terms of weapon, the Red Hornstone Thresher obviously, obviously is going to be his best weapon as it boosts defense, crit damage, and also boosts normal and charge attack damage. But these weapons here are also really good. Essentially any main DPS weapon is going to be really good on him. You don't want any kind of supporting weapons uh, because, well, he doesn't have any supporting features to his character. So you really just want main DPS claymores. That is essentially the, uh, the go-to but his best is the Red Hornstone Thresher. So in terms of artifacts, he's actually got a lot of choice in my honest opinion. So his best in slot just from first glance is Husk of Opulent Dreams as a boost defense and also defense and geo damage bonus in the four set. But some pretty good runners up are Archaic Petra with pretty much anything else. You could do Archaic Petra, Husk of Opulent Dreams, uh, boosting just his whole damage kit as a whole. It's not going to be as good as Husk of Opulent, but still going to be good. Four set gladiators could work very well because of the, just the damage boost to Claymore characters, as well as gladiators just being a damage boosting set. One that I'm keen to see people try is Ray Tracing Bolides or Ray Tracing Bolides, whatever it is called. I'm, I'm keen to see that one, how it's going to work with characters because it is applicable because Geo characters just apply a shield to them if they're causing reactions, or you could just run Arataki Zhongli or Arataki Noel, and also get the constant shield going on. Forset Shimanawas could also work just as well as Forset Gladiators. You do get a bigger bonus than Forset Gladiators, but the difficulty there is that you are draining yourself of energy that you need to quickly recover, so you can have that Shimanawas bonus whilst your elemental burst is up, which is going to be a bit difficult, but I believe that it is still doable. Now, obviously, you can try Noblesse Oblige and uh, potentially Archaic Petra or Husk of Open Dreams. Noblesse Oblige. But I feel that Noblesse Oblige is a bit of an outdated set for the more recent characters, seeing as the character has a bit more of an in-depth kind of way of working, and they need the more kind of current, uh, modern artifacts that work well with them instead of the old Noblesse Oblige, which works better with just older characters. But that's pretty much the kind of the artifact rundown, is Husk of Earth and Dreams is the best, and pretty much all the Claymore-specific damage-boosting ones, or all the kind of Geo-centered ones, are going to be the best. Now to jump into some gameplay of Arataki, just to show you guys the gameplay loop. Um, it's not the most uh, fun thing to do in my honest opinion, because there's no real indicator for superlative strength, apart from this little thing floating behind Arataki. Uh, as you build it up, you'll see that the mask itself develops. Uh, you see two eyes there, and that is the indicator for the superlative strength stacks. As you deal damage and as you do certain attacks, you'll see that mask behind him build up further and further. And whilst it is a cool indicator, I think just going back to a simpler way of just seeing numbers appear above your HP bar is much easier and much uh, more helpful than whatever this is. Now going into the actual gameplay loop, so essentially, like I said in the uh, in the Italian uh, preview, is a certain ones of his attacks uh, give him superlative strength. And if I remember correctly, it's his second and fourth attack of his normal attack rotation, and then once you have his elemental burst up, it's your full rotation that gives you superlative strength stacks. And as you get to max superlative strength stacks, you start your charge attack, and you will be able to deal massive damage. 
Obviously then when you pop your burst, it's a, a lot more pronounced as to what he does. But you build up your stacks as per normal. You get a full mask of his thing. You hold down your charge attack. He'll do a lot of upswings and then do a massive slam at the end. Now, and that's pretty much the gameplay loop. You want to chuck out your elemental skill as frequently as possible. And then build up stacks of uh, superlative strength. Pop his burst and then you can swing a few times, but I just recommend going straight into his charge attack because you're going to be doing the most damage there. During his burst, do remember that you do just gain superlative strength stacks like there's no tomorrow, especially if you have constellations. And if you're using Arataki as a selfish DPS, then his uptime on his burst is ridiculous. You'll be able to pretty much stay in his burst 99% of the time. Obviously, the only downtime is the actual cooldown duration of the ability. And that's pretty much all there is to this gameplay. There's nothing really crazily intuitive there. It's just a bunch of management of stacks of superlative strength, as well as potentially Husk of Up and the Dream stacks, and your energy recharge itself for your burst. Now, what are my thoughts on the character? Well, here's the thing. I've already established that he's going to suffer from one problem alone when you try to take him into a lot of content. And it's going to be the, the problem that Hu Tao as well suffers at the same time, uh, although not as prominent with Hu Tao due to certain reasons, but it's the whole, if your character doesn't have their elemental skill or elemental burst, they are really bad or practically useless. Uh, if you do happen to have a moment where your Arataki doesn't have his elemental burst, uh, he's not doing any damage if you have built him the normal way of using Husky of Ocular and Dreams um, as well as his own Claymore. If you have that build going on and you're trying to deal damage outside of his elemental burst, you're not going to be doing a lot. Same with Hu Tiao, who she doesn't do a lot of damage outside of her elemental skill if she's built the normal way of using Crimson Witch or Shimanao's Reminiscence. And the, how Hu Tiao suffers less from that is that hers is an elemental skill cooldown, whilst Arataki's is a burst and has an energy requirement so you will definitely need a lot of energy recharge for your Arataki's if you are building them. Now overall, he's a great character and I do enjoy his gameplay, although kind of hard to determine. Uh, superlative strength stacks specifically, I wish Mahoyo kind of did a better indicator of the actual stacks themselves instead of this weird marker around characters. I have the same problem with the Memory of Dust, it, there's no real well-made indicator on if the weapon has stacks or not, you have to kind of kind of look through the fourth wall and kind of determine if certain graphics are certain things. So I think he suffers from that of not being able to provide the player enough information on what's going on with him. But if you can bypass that and just kind of get good gameplay rotation of, okay, I should by now have certain amount of stacks. If you get into that kind of groove, then obviously you'll love the character. He can do a lot of damage. I don't think if, uh, for a moment that he'll be meta. And if he is, it'll be kind of a very niche team. But for the most part, he's a great character, fun character, cool rotation, cool design. Uh, not my cup of tea, though. I'll definitely not be rolling for him and definitely will be trying to avoid him as a character. And that's pretty much all I've got to say for Arotaki. I don't really think he's a bad character. I did, obviously, in my uh, little first impressions of him, say that he does have a 50-50 chance of being good. And I still stand by that. I don't think he'll be phenomenal, uh, but he'll be able to get through the game because he is a five star. Don't let me don't let me try to persuade you that he's in any way bad. He'll definitely be able to get through the game. He is a five star, just not any type of power that I'm looking for at this point. But that's pretty much the whole Arataki kind of review guide and all that good stuff. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys want to comment about anything that I've said that's wrong or you guys uh, have a different view, obviously comment it down below in the description or in the comment section, not the description, you can't do that. In the comment section, say down below, and I'll definitely see what you guys have to say. But for now, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy it, like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay notified when I upload. See you guys, have a great day, stay hydrated, and peace out.